Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, we're going to recreate this movie poster. So I ran across this movie poster, and I thought it would make a great tutorial. I did a photo shoot with my daughter, and you can see the original photo here. We're going to take this image and do quite a lot of work to it make it look submerged, add some debossed lines, so that eventually we'll end up with something that looks like this. Now, if you wanna follow along in the tutorial, go ahead in the description of this video. I included a link to all the assets that you need, all the assets that I use in the video itself, so that you can follow along and do the steps as I do them. This is the best way to, lo to learn Photoshop is to do projects where you actually have to use the various tools and I strongly suggest as you're doing this to try to learn all the shortcuts so that you become fast in Photoshop. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go File, New. And here we're gonna change the name to Floating Poster. I'm gonna change the width to 2152, the height to 3000, the resolution to 300, and we want an RGB 8-bit white. So let's go ahead and hit Create. Good. Next, we're going to go to View, New Guide Layout. And I'll just set this to default. And we want to set the columns to 4 with 0 gutter. Or just we can simply delete that. And I want 6 rows, again, with no gutter. And then I want a margin of 60 pixels all around. So I'm just tapping through these. And there you go, we can hit OK. All right, so that's kind of our basic guide here. We're gonna go to File, Place Embedded, and we're gonna select the camera raw file called Naya Photo. Go ahead and place that. And I've already set how I want the colors in here. Um, but you can go ahead and just take a look at these settings. I'll pause here for a second so you can do that. And let's hit OK. All right, and in terms of alignment, I want this, I want her face to be center aligned on this line right here. And I want her two eyes to be on this line and the bottom of her chin to be on this line. So let's go ahead and center, uh, straighten her out first. Just gonna put her about there. And let's move up the chin. Good, now I'm gonna take the anchor point here and put that there because that chin is where I want it. And now I can take this, drag, hold down, shift and option so it's moving from that anchor point. And I want it right about there. And I want the nostrils to be centered. So that looks really good right there. We got 64. Let's hit that check mark. Good. So now I have that placed. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and get rid of her eyebrows. Now, before I do that, I'm going to make a copy of this layer. So let's go ahead and drag that down to the new layer icon. We can also use Command J. That's the shortcut for making a copy of a layer. And I don't want this to be a smart object anymore, so I'm gonna right mouse click here and say rasterize layer. And then we can also turn off the guides. It's under show guides, and that's command semicolon. All right, so in here, what I'm gonna to do to get rid of the eyebrows is go to the patch tool. Let's just zoom in here with Command Spacebar, and Spacebar lets you pan around. I have a whole uh, tutorial on shortcuts that you should take a look at if it seems like I'm using more than you're used to. Okay, and what we're going to do is just drag around here, and I'm going to hold down Shift as I drag. That way if I let go it becomes a polygonal selection. And just right around there, that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna now take this, make sure I'm on normal, not content aware, and then I'm gonna drag this up 
to where I just have clean skin. So right about there. And there you go. That's going to get rid of the eyebrow. And we can also get rid of this few spots there, like so. Good. All right, let's do this one. Same thing. And then just drag that up to so there. Good. So that gets rid of the eyebrows. Next, I'm going to use the spot healing brush and get rid of all these little spots around here. I'm going to fast forward through this because um, you don't need to see me do it all. I would say the important thing is don't make your spot healing brush bigger than it needs to be to get rid of the spots. The smaller it is, the more natural it'll look. If you make your brush too big, um, it's just not going to look right because it's having to guess too much. So the less you can make the program guess, the better off you are. And to adjust your brush size, just use the bracket up and bracket down keys on the keyboard. And for this, I'm going to use the patch tool just to get rid of this right there. And let's also just clean up a few of these spots back to the spot healing brush. Good, that looks quite good. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is some frequency separation, which is a technique used to uh, smooth out skin and other things. So essentially what we're gonna do is separate the fine detail from the not so fine detail. So the first thing we're going to do is make a copy of this layer. We're going to call this one low frequency. And then make another copy. And call this high frequency. And let's go ahead and turn off that one. Go into low frequency. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And if we just click here to where the skin is. Essentially, we want to get rid of that fine detail in the skin. So let's take this up to about 3.6. That looks good. Hit OK. And then on our high frequency layer, make sure that layer is selected. We're going to go to Image, Apply Image. And we want the layer here to be our low frequency layer. And we want the blending to be Subtract. We want the opacity to be 100, the scale to be 2, and the offset to be 128. So go ahead and pause if you want to take down these settings. And if these settings aren't getting the result that you see on my screen, it's because your image is 16-bit instead of 8-bit. OK, let's hit OK. And then we're going to change the blending mode of the high frequency layer to linear light. Now if we take this layer and hold down Shift, and then do Command G to put both of these into a group. We'll call this Frequency Separation. If we turn this on and off, you should see no difference between this and the layer below. And if you are seeing a difference, it's because you blurred your low frequency too much. Okay, So you can always go backwards and do the whole process again if you're not seeing that this is the same between before and after. All right, next what we're going to do is take our low frequency, make a copy of it, go on our lasso tool, which is L on the keyboard, change our feather. Um, the default is 0. We're going to change it to 15, which I've already done here. And then what we're going to do is basically go through select areas that don't intersect between large elements. So we don't want to, for example, I wouldn't want to select this. Instead, I want to select this area maybe this area, this area, and what we're going to do is blur those areas. So make sure you're on the low frequency copy that you made, and make sure you retain a copy of the original. And then we're going to go make a selection here like this, and then go to filter, blur, and this time we want to blur it more. So you can see as I bring the slider up how that's affecting the image. I want this blurred quite a lot, but not that much, so it becomes flat. So probably around 20. Let's hit OK. And then we're just going to go through 
select new areas and Gaussian blur again. Now you'll see control command F repeats your last filter. So we use that. And just go through the whole image this way. Okay, there you go. Now what we can do is, I this is obviously looks way too um, clean. What I can do is take the opacity of this down to 50%, so I get some of the original coming back in here, and I still have this clean look. The last thing I want to do is just get rid of this hair here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a layer at the very top, Shift, Option, Command, E. And what that's going to do is it's going to flatten everything into this layer so I can keep working but if I need to I can always go back to my layered file. And then I'm going to go to the patch tool just select this hair, make sure I'm on normal, just drag that down here and I can kind of clean up these edges as well as need be. That looks pretty good. And the next thing I want to do is add a gradient map to the top of this and you'll see the gradient map defaults from your background color to your foreground color but what we're going to do is change this here we're going to make a three point gradient so the first gradient color I want to be 14, 21, 31 so a very dark blue I'm going to add a point in the middle here, make sure it's on 50% or be yeah, a location 50% and then I'm going to change the colors here to 37, 58, and 67. 37, 58, there you go. And the last one is going to be 209. 208 and 205. All right, let's hit OK. And I'm going to change the blending mode of this to color. And you can see there the difference. Normal, it's affecting far too much of my luminosity. With color, it's just affecting the color. I'm actually going to change the opacity on this to 75. So I still have a bit of the original color coming through. And then I'm actually going to make a copy of this and change the second one to normal. Because I do want that lightness darkness, but not as strong as the original. And we can take the opacity on this one down to 65. So that's about what I want. And last thing I want to do before we do the cutout is just clean up her hair. I don't want all these fray hairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the pen tool and just kind of give her a haircut. So I'm going to start here, make a click, just kind of go up click and drag to make new points and just kind of go the outline of her head here. Kind of where I imagine her head is as opposed to the hair. And we can go around the ear here. Maybe down this way. Go up all the way around this ear. You can zoom in here. Go around this ear. We're going to be blurring this quite a bit so I'm not super worried about being over precise here but that looks about good and we can do right mouse click make selection hit OK and then up here I'm going to go on a big brush so B for my brush right mouse click and select out of the general brushes the soft brush or this one of these two I'll pick this one make it really big so let's say 600 pixels should be fine and then 
hold down option to select a color here and then just kind of paint and then select as I move around the image I'm selecting that color again just so it stays relatively similar to the background color that's already there I'm just painting out this hair And that looks pretty good. I can do select, deselect, command D. Good. So that looks quite good. Next thing I want to do is just get rid of that hair there. Um, same thing. We're going to do the pen tool. Just select around this area. I'm also going to kind of paint out this and I'm going to do that much more roughly. I'm going to right mouse click, make selection again, and with a large brush, just paint that out like so. I actually wouldn't mind this being a little lighter. So I can select a slightly lighter color here and just add some lightness down here. That'll just make the neck more distinct in our very blurred out version. And Let's also do this side, just get rid of her sleeve there. Um, so when we blur it, we don't really see that. So let's make selection again and just paint that out. That looks quite good. Good. All right. Next, we are going to cut her face out. Okay, so first I'm going to take all these layers here and just Command E to smush them all together into one. I don't need all those layers anymore. Next, I'm going to go into my pen tool. And what I want to do is I'm going to zoom in here just a little so I can see her whole face. I want to start right about where her hairline stops, a little bit in from her hairline. And essentially what we're doing is we're creating a line that kind of represents what part of her head would be sticking out of the water if, if her face was submerged in water. So right about there to about there. We can keep drawing around. And when I draw this side, I want to kind of mimic what I did with this side. So try to put your anchor points in about the same places. And then I can go A for my direct select tool and just clean that up, make it look nice. We make this one match the, the, the other side a little bit better. And I'm just moving these anchor points around and also moving the handles so that my curved line kind of represents how what part of her face would be not submerged in the water. And that looks pretty good. I may want to pull in around here just a little bit because that part of the skull does have like a concave part. And for realism, we'd want that part. There'd be more water coming up right there. Good. So that looks quite nice. Now what I'm going to do is right mouse click and do make selection and then I'm going to make a copy of this layer and we'll call this not submerged and put a mask on it and then we're going to call this one submerged and then what I want to do is I want to add a big big blur on the submerged so to do that we're going to go to filter blur gallery iris blur and so the iris blur, when I turn this, you can see what's getting blurred. And the blur starts here, and, and then from this point forward, it's 100% blurred. So if I move this, you can see the point between those where it's blurring and not blurring. And I do want it to be slightly less blurred where her face is not in the water. But I do want the top of the head quite blurred, so 
kind of about there, just so that as she's going more underwater, it's more blurred. And that looks quite good around her head. I do want it a little bit more, more blurred here, but we'll do that separately. So that's a good starting point. Next, I'm gonna to go to Filter, Blur Gallery again, and this time I'm gonna use the Tilt Shift. And the Tilt Shift is, is, is essentially a gradient blur. So from here to there is how much it's blurred. Now I don't want the top any more blurred, so I'm just gonna drag this up so it's not blurring up there at all. And then I want the blur to go from about there to there, and we're gonna blur it quite a bit more. Ideally, I don't really want to see that at all. And let's hit OK. So that's quite good. And then what I'm going to do now is I am going to just do some painting here to get the detail of this old shirt out of the way. And for this, I want to, I'm going to go B for my brush. I'm going to make my brush really big, select these colors, and just kind of paint away I do like this little detail, that highlight there, so I'm gonna keep that. And I do like the detail here. I even like this little detail there. So that's about right. Um, I think that looks quite good. Now what I may wanna do is also just pick a slightly darker color here and just kind of vignette a little bit around the image. And maybe make it a little bit darker down here. And there you go, that looks quite good. All right, so now what we wanna do is just make this look a little bit more submerged. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down Command and click on the mask. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna select that transparency. I'm gonna make a new layer here. And then go on my, still have my big brush. I'm gonna make it a little smaller and select this color over here. And then just kind of on the edge, just paint a little bit of shadow coming in on her face from the water. So it's like an ambient shadow from the water. And then on this side, we're gonna do with a, oops, with another layer. So we can call this ambient shadow. And then this we're gonna call ambient glow. And this we're gonna select kind of this lighter color here. And I actually want this to be a little bit more cyan-y. So maybe like that and just kind of paint a little bit more glow coming in on this side. Good. All right, I'm gonna do Command D. Now you can see we're starting to get that effect of her face being kind of immersed inside water there. It's probably a little too bright, this ear because if it's gonna be underwater, it shouldn't be quite so bright. So what I can do here is maybe go in this layer, select this watercolor and just kind of paint a little bit there and then take the opacity down on that. To about there. And that looks quite nice. Next, I wanna select this again, Command, click on the mask, make a new layer, and just call this Stroke. And I'm gonna to go to Select, Modify, Expand. I'm gonna expand that by 25 pixels, just push it away, and then change my foreground color to kind of a lighter blue, and then go to Edit, stroke. I want a three point stroke. Center's fine. Let's hit OK. If I command D, you can see just a little bit of a stroke there. I'm going to change the blending mode on that to screen. Take the, let's blur it a bit. Blur, Gaussian blur. Maybe just like 2.2. And then put a big mask on it, go back. I still have my big brush and I can just kind of paint a few sections away just so it looks like kind of the, the first part of a ripple really. And then I'm gonna go to File Open and in the Assets, 
you'll see a document called Clean Drop of Liquid. And what I want to do, I still have my feather on 15. I just want to grab this whole edge right here, this whole ripple. And then Command C, and then in here do Command V. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use this and place it around here. Let's use Transform Command T to get it basically in place. So there. And then we're going to use Edit and Puppet Warp. This is going to be a little bit easier, I think. And now I can just put a couple spots on there and then just drag those. There you go. That's actually serving our purpose there a little bit better. I just want this to kind of fit the contours of the bottom of our face there. Hit OK. That looks good. And let's put that underneath so it's not over. And then I want to get rid of all the color in it. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Black and White. Hit OK. And then change the blending mode to soft light. And then do Command M. And then just adjust my curve here, the bottom of my curve, and the top of my curve so it's not so strong. And then I can also take the opacity down. I want this to be pretty subtle. And then maybe add a mask and just get rid of the edges there. So there you can see getting that nice effect of some kind of ripples. We're going to do that to the top and to this side as well. So let's go in here. We can take the same one, Command C, Command V, and let's use it for the top. I'm going to do Command T for transform. Just rotate that around, make it smaller. About there. And then edit. Uh, puppet warp again. And I'm just adding dots as I need them here. That looks quite good. And let's do black and white again. Shortcut for that is Option Shift Command B. And let's do Soft Light. Take down the opacity a bit. What I may do is also turn off the stroke for now just so I can see more clearly how that's looking. Just added a mask and just brushed off those edges so we're not seeing any hard edges. But that's getting a nice effect of the face being in water and creating a few ripples. Maybe having some here would help too. So let's go ahead and do this one more time. Maybe let's take these just so that we have some variation here. So I'm going to go to here. Command C. Command V. Command T for transform. Take those there. Ooh, actually, yeah, let's do that there. And then if I hold down Command, I can drag one of these points independently and kind of skew it just like that. And then I'm going to go to Edit Puppet Warp again. Zoom in here and just start moving this around. Okay, image, adjustments, black and white again, soft light, 
And let's take the opacity on that down. And just hit those edges. And we can also see now where we really need this and where we don't. But I think that looks pretty nice. All right, the next thing I want to do is add the lines around her eye. And for that, I'm actually going to use the original poster as reference. So let's go place embedded here. And you'll see perfect version 2 extra large. I'm going to just place that in there. I'm going to zoom in here to his eye. Go in my lasso tool, change my feather to zero and just kind of select out his eye section here, all the part that has these lines. So right around there looks good. And then just do Command J so I have that on its own layer. And then I can turn this off or throw it away. I'm actually going to throw it away. All right. And then we can just change the opacity on this so that I can see my original. Try to line up the eyeball there. That looks pretty good. Maybe Command-T and stretch it out so that it fits my image a little bit better. Kind of just looking at where the eye lines are. And that looks pretty good. So let's hit OK. And using that as reference, we can turn the opacity. I'm going to make some paths that follow these lines. Now to do this, I'm going to go in the Pen tool. Make sure you're on Path and go here and change the existing work path name to face shape just so you don't override it in case you need it for anything else and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to start drawing the first line here and just follow the contours here now when i'm done with that first line i want to hold down command which is going to temporarily change my tool to the arrow click so i don't have that selected anymore and then start my next one. And the reason for that is otherwise you're just going to make one long line. So again, command to click. Command to click. So there you go, I have all my lines made. Now turn this off and just make sure that these lines line up nicely with the image here. And I can go on my A tool, direct selection tool, and just kind of select and move those as needed. I want it to be right where the um, top of the eye, the eyelid meets the eyebrow there. That looks quite good. And this should meet kind of the bottom of the eye, but have an anchor point where the bottom eyelid starts. And this can go into the corner there. And this should go in more like so. Same with this one, I would think. this in a little bit too and this is I mean I'm just eyeballing this it's just what looks good and I like that okay so now what we have to do is make this look like it's debossed into her face and to do that I'm going to change my brushes to black and white go on my brush tool so B right mouse click and select this brush which brush should I use this one here 
good. And I'm going to change the pixels to, let's say, three pixels. So now I have a black brush. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to select all these paths. So they're all selected. Go back on my brush tool, B, with all the paths selected. I'm going to press this button right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to paint black lines of all those paths. So you can see I now have a layer with all those paths. Now I may want to make this a little bolder. Um, and also seeing them in black, I think I want this one to curve more to this to her face. So I think I'm going to revise my path. So let's throw this away real quick, go back to our paths, and go back onto our A tool here. I'm just going to make this kind of curve a little more so that it's ending there with a curve that goes up. So just so we're getting more the definition of her face there. Maybe pull this one in a little bit. Yeah, I think I like that. Good. All right, so now let's go back to our brush tool, make a new layer again. We're going to call this black lines with all of our paths selected. So A, select all the paths, go back on the brush tool, and let's bump this up to four pixels and then click on this. All right, so we now have all of our lines. Now I'm going to take these lines, copy them, and then do layer or image adjustments invert to make all the lines white. Put these below the black and then change this to soft light. Change this to soft light. And then I'm going to offset the black ones. You can see the effect that that's having. I'm just clicking it a bit. So now we're getting that debossed look. And I'm just moving them down and to the side. And that looks pretty nice. We're getting that nice debossed look. Now what I'm going to do is actually, rather than having these both individually on normal on soft light. I'm going to select both of them, convert them to a smart object, and then put the smart object on soft light. And then also put a blur on these, blur Gaussian blur. Like so. And the beauty of this is I can go on the smart filter with a large black brush large black soft brush and just on certain spots I can make it not blurred so kind of in the parts that are the mo most in focus in the image I can make it not blurred so kind of just hit those a few spots and then I can also put a mask on the whole thing and make it so that the edges bleed rather than end abruptly I can also change the opacity and just make it not quite so strong in a few spots where it looks too strong. And I think that looks pretty nice. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is add some particles into the water area. To do that, I'm going to go File place embedded and you'll see this particles camera raw file I'm going to double click that it's already set how I want it um, but I can go ahead just pause and copy these settings if you open it and they don't match 
what you see here. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to turn this and then just make it quite a bit bigger. Just about there. And I want to put this underneath here. And then put this on screen. And then take the opacity down so it's just barely visible. So around 9%, just so we can see the particles, and that's about it. OK, next, I want to add a curve to the top and just punch up this image. I'm also noticing we're not, this is part of the image is a little bit too light, so we're going to fix that real quick. Let's go to this layer here. I'm going to hold down Option and then go on my brush tool, select this color, and then hold Option and click on the eyeball again. And I've got it on opacity 52, and let's just hit this one or two times. There you go. Okay, so that looks quite good. It is a little too bright here, so what I could do is on my curve, just take this area here. Okay, so that's right there. Let's take that down a bit. Right about there looks good, but I do want to punch this up. And what I'm going to do to do that is take this layer here, make a copy of it, drag it all the way to the top, put this on linear, or sorry, screen, and then double click over here on the right, and then take down this so that it's just those highlight areas there. And then hold down Option to split this. So it's just hitting those highlight areas. Kind of like that. That looks pretty nice. All right. Before we do some overall color corrections, I want to add the lights here. If we turn on our reference image here, you can see where those lights are. There's one here, one there, one along this, one along there, and then one little L-shaped one there. So let's just move this up and see where they are. OK, so let's start with the one here. And for this, what I'm going to do is use my pen tool. I'm going to go ahead to my paths, call this overall lines, and then I'm going to go in my pen tool and basically just copy these. And I want them to taper, so like that. Let's copy this one as well. And I'm not so worried about lining them up inside yet because we're going to do that next. First, I just want to copy their general shape and direction. And if you hold down Option, you can cut off the tail there. I have quite a few other tutorials on how to do um, how to use the pen tool. So I'm not going to go into that in so much detail. Okay, so now with this off, I'm going to go on A and just line these up. And I just want these to look like they're happening inside these grooves.
Okay, so I'm quite happy with all those. I'm going to select them all, right mouse click, make selection, and we're going to call these light streaks. And we're going to fill these with white. So make sure my foreground color is white and then hold down option delete. And that's what we're going to do is first make a copy of this and then go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Change it to like really big numbers so you can't even see them anymore. Um, yeah, it looks like probably 30 is fine. And then make a new copy. So if this is 30, we want this one to be 15. So blur, you're just kind of cutting it in half every time. So this one will be 15. The next one will be eight. And this one will be four. And then we'll go to two. And then I'm going to take all these from four up to 30, squash them into their own layer, and then do Command U for hue saturation. Put it on colorize, make it high saturation, change the color to a red there, and then change the blending mode to screen. Then I can make a copy of that to make it brighter. And then I can also turn off the original one. Actually, not turn it off, but what I do want is I want it to taper off. So on the original, I'm going to add a mask. And with a large brush, I'm just going to hit the ends there so that they taper off in sharpness. Like that. That looks pretty nice. Next, I'm going to go and grab a flare. This is my flare library, by the way, and I'll include a link in the description of this video of where you can get this library. It is a paid for item, but it's definitely worth having. All right, let's grab this one. And I'm going to put this on screen, put it at the end here and then Command T and make that very small. And then Command U for hue saturation and change the color of it to red. Also, I think the color of this here needs to be a little bit more toward red and not so pink. So I'm just going to move that in both of these. There you go. Okay, and actually I'm going to do a curve on this as well, just to kind of punch it up a little bit. There you go. All right, and let's rasterize this layer. And then what I can do is make a copy of it Put it there, maybe make it a bit smaller here, and also copy it to the end of this, Command-T to transform, and the end of here, Command-T to transform. There you go, we're getting that nice look. Okay, so that puts all the elements in place. Last thing I want to do is just give the whole thing a little more punch and color. So I'm going to do Shift Option Command E to put it all in one layer. I'm going to convert this to a smart object and then do Filter Camera Raw. And in here, I'm going to take the temperature down just a little bit. Maybe take the exposure contrast up a little. 
take those highlights down but the whites up take the shadows down a bit and take up the clarity maybe take up the vibrance just a bit and then I also want to go to the FX and add some grain to the whole thing and maybe some vignetting like so all right, I'm quite happy with that. And the last thing we're gonna do is just add some titles. And for the titles, I'm gonna turn the guides back on. Let's command semicolon. And I'm also gonna add the black frame that the original poster has. And I can do that because this is a smart object here. I should be able to just add a inner stroke here. Let's see if that works. I'll put this on the inside, make it 60 pixels, and then change it to black, and put it on normal. That'll give us the nice stroke. Good. All right, and then I'm going to go on to my text tool. I want the font to be Corona one regular 100 point center. Also just leave this up. Corona one is a Google font. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can get it. And we want the tracking here to be 400. So just pause, copy these settings. We're gonna go right here, click, type in floating. And that's way too big. So let's take it down. I want it to go kind of between these two. So let's say 25 points is good. I'm gonna move it down so that it's sitting on top of that guide there. And then what I wanna do is go to stroke, add a outside stroke of three pixels in white. And then take down the fill of the layer to zero. And the difference between fill and opacity when it comes to effects is fill will change the opacity of the layer but not the effects, whereas opacity will change the opacity of the effects and the layer itself. So just one thing to know when to use opacity and when to use fill. So that looks quite good. Next, I'm gonna copy this layer and what we're gonna do now is change the font to Adobe Gothic Standard. It's a Japanese font and then I'm gonna to go to Google. And if you go to Google Translate, if you go to Google Translate and just put in um, floating and then change the language here to Japanese, we're gonna get some nice Japanese text. We're going to copy that, go back to Photoshop, and here Command A and then Command V to paste those Japanese letters. And then what I want to do is do Command T for transform and I want to just make this bigger. So about like that and then go back into the type and just close in the tracking. Um, 
to, let's say, about there, so 180. And then I'm going to change the stroke color here to a color from the image. So maybe that blue color there, or maybe something a little more saturated like this here. And we're going to change this to screen and also change the stroke to screen. And then we can adjust the opacity if we want. And let's turn off the guides. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed that video, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and also leave a like, share this video, or leave a comment. I definitely do read the comments. They give me inspiration for what are the tutorials to do and also what people are interested in finding out about. I also do answer any questions in the comments, at least for now. <sighs> Lastly, if you want to dive into the world of Photoshop compositing, which is super fun, I suggest you get my Photoshop starter kit. I will include a link for that in the description. And it has a whole bunch of assets that you can use to get started in Photoshop compositing, including flares, light leaks, bouquets, textures, clouds, even camera raw files that you can use as kind of a backdrop or a starting point for a composite. And then obviously I do suggest you take your own photography because that's the fun of compositing. You get to go take some photos like I did of my daughter here, and then you can turn it into a really cool composite. All right, I will see you next week. In the meantime, here are some other videos to check out. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel.